good morning. How's everyone? It was quite a night last night, wasn't it? How many was woken up with their phones going off and tornado and all that stuff? Yeah. It's like, wow, wow. And, and with us out there close to the beach, we, I heard howling. So I'm like, okay, Lord. I don't know if it's just a storm or if it was a tornado or what. But, yeah, so I know in the area there was damage and all that reported, but, man, there's a, just a, talk about a storm over the place, and, and it was interesting, because as I even pulled up the radar, they said the low front that was causing all this has been stalled for days, and I look, and it's right smack on the border, and it made me think of that separation and just holding... Um, right in the separation of Florida to the rest of the, of the country and just this war on what's coming <laughs> and happening down here. So sometimes yeah. the physical reflects yep. what's happening in the spiritual. Yes. And so, you know, um, I know that some of us were even here praying and warring to break that and even for um, the, the, what may be hitting people to just be lifted and healing and, and the... Um, that those that feel I can't, I don't know if I can do it this morning, that, he, that those that need to be here would be here this morning. And, and even those that are watching online, we were saying for you also, those that, that are there, that you would begin to feel um, his presence and, and just a relief and um, rest right now. And so I even just declare that over all of the body, even those online, that there is peace, yes. peace, peace over this yes. land, over yes. each one of us. And I thank you, Father. And, I, and yeah, no room. No room. So, thank you, Jesus. So, it's a good morning to war. Yes. Yeah. And war the way that I actually get something done in the spiritual is through our worship. Because he can't stand our worship unto God. He can't stand our adoration and our love and our affection for the Father and for Jesus. And so I am excited for the Holy Spirit to move this morning. Amen. Amen. Sweet, yeah. Sweetheart, I just I wanted to I just made a connection. You were I was hoping you would share the word from um, from Jim Paul, because also you realize what he if you remember in the word what he said the reason why God was going to do what He's going to do and it was because of love. And then she just reminded us it's Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought you might want to share that. Okay, so uh, Jim Paul was the one that I showed the video of from last week that was sharing what he felt. And he um, he felt it specifically over what's been happening here in Florida and felt it as a word for, for Florida and the United States and even over Canada. Well, Friday night he sends me a direct message about about it and just said, I've been, we've been praying for you all day today. And I just, and he, so he sent that video again to me. And so he spoke to me, um, kind of in a different way with it. And so let me describe it to you. So the direct words that he was speaking and was said, the oppressive brass sky over you and your church mission is being broken top down just because he loves. <laughs> so you know what? There is a connection with that. He loves us. And you know what? For anybody that, that normally would say bah humbug, whether you're single or not, let me remind you, you're not. You're not single. That's right. <laughs> and this is a day that maybe maybe the world has has brought in to celebrate, you know, love in a different way. But may this be a day that even this morning that we celebrate our love as the as the as the bride unto our bridegroom. Amen. So I just declare that even as that storm has passed, that things things are being broken over this body right now and over this area. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to wing this. You don't even know about this yet. But um, something that was spoken to me by Mike this morning that was somebody else mentioned last night and the excitement of what's about to happen. Because we've been talking about how we're going to get outside the four walls and we're going to start going out. And that's been some of the vision that God's had, had given us since the beginning. Some of it even relates back to things I heard him speaking to me when I was 17. But you know what? It starts with flickers. Every fire starts with a flicker. 
And in the same way that even a big old bonfire starts with a flicker. I don't know, anybody been around bonfires much? Okay, me and my boys back home when we were younger, we were pros. <laughs> We'd collect couches all week, literally. <laughs> and would have the, the fire department. You know we were in county. Come and say, boys, it's too big. What do you mean? It's 50 feet high, boys. <laughs> but let me tell you, it starts with a flicker. It starts with that light. It starts with the match. Wow. That's good. And it'll start no matter where, but sometimes you got to hit it in the most flammable spot. So it's time for us as the church. Yeah, it can happen to this whole area in the church. It's time for the church to get out to the unbelievers. So even as we plan larger outreaches, and there's some cool stuff that I see us planning and having opportunity for, even, even one that, that might call on this week that probably could have several thousand there. And even said to them, well, we've never had anybody ask to use that before. Cool. We'll take it. And so we're even going to declare that there's going to be provision as they go to their board to get approval for it to be used. That there will be amphitheater after amphitheater throughout the whole area. And just even now, as God is collecting people, resources, even sound equipment, and people to run sound equipment, and people to do ministry, and for all of us to get out there and be the body and be doing ministry. So what are we going to do before those outreaches? We're going to start taking the flickers out. So just be prepared. Some of our Saturday nights coming out here pretty soon are probably going to be at the beach or, yeah. or in a park or something like that. Yeah. And we'll come back here on Sunday mornings. But, you know, we can, we can also take Saturday night outside of the four walls and just go take the Saturday night fire as we've been calling it ironically out yes it's time to bring healing it's time to bring the miraculous it's time to bring the Holy Spirit and the presence of God and the healing love of the Father out to everyone all right you ready? <laughs> I guess I should, before we go any further, talk about announcements. <laughs> I just had that, just had that hit me. Um, yeah. He's just, she's gonna pass so, thank you. Get me back on track because I'm like, all right, let's go, let's go this morning. All right. So, men's and women's group are on this week. Again, same bat channel, same bat place. So, women at our house and, and the men at at Village Inn, uh, and we're just going to continue to watch God just do this, and and I love it because I see people that are, are ready and getting fired up to just bond and pray yes. and war yes. and de decree what's going to happen and, and, and just let loose of all false identities. Yes. So we're going to continue because you know what? Uh, just as we've been, we started talking about, you know, the firehouses. So. Yep. You know, one of the plans is as we um, enter into changing the name to Catch the Fire Tampa Bay, that we will be um, keeping the firehouse name, but that's going to be all our small groups. Mm -hmm. And so those those there, if you have a heart, we, we want to launch a minimum of four um, here in the next, um, I don't know, we're, it's it'll be in the next month and a half, two months, okay? I just don't want to rush it. I want to get everybody prepared and then pour into our leaders all that and so it's two things if you have a heart to lead um, in that type of an environment and also if you have a, a heart to host because sometimes you just need to separate it out and let leaders lead and let people that have a real gift of hospitality and that be love to the whole place and so either one of those um, sometimes you're a bit of both but it's, it's also good to be gathered around both so either one, if you have it, at, we're going to keep the sign-up sheet out there for a couple, you know, for a little while here. So just keep signing up if, you know, if God lays that on your heart. No pressure. This is if God's pushing you on that, okay? So that's between you and God. Um, and then 
Also, um, just so you can be prepared, some already consider yourself part of the team of, of what, what we do here, just even putting everything together, everything from snacks and coffee to set up and, and prayer and all of that. Um, but if, if you also even want to consider yourself or would like to join in becoming the, the team, now this isn't leadership, this is just being part of the team and you know we're all going together of, of going after what after Jesus and all that. Um, if you want to be a part of that, we're going to have a team meeting um, March 2nd. It's a Tuesday night at 6.30 at our house. So just put that on your schedule. Um, it's a couple weeks out. So we'd love to have everybody that... Uh, there's no limit on number of teams. Yeah. Okay? So those that want to just be a part of the team and say, hey, I'm here to do, do whatever I need to do, even looking for opportunity, come. Because there's plenty. Yeah. And it's not just physical. Sometimes it's even just... Just even um, getting prepared for prayer ministry and, and all of that too. So anyhow, that's that. Uh, 2020 giving statements. <laughs> they are ready. I know. We've been running behind, so we apologize. We're a couple weeks behind on that. You should be getting those this week. So if we have an email on you that we're gonna we're gonna send it directly to you. Otherwise, we will mail it, and if we somehow don't have a, a mailing address or an email, then we will have them in an envelope sealed here for you next week. So, all right. Um, did I miss anything? Oh, building. Yeah. Here's the one of the big things for you this week to be praying about, and specifically ask everybody. Wednesday night, um, we're going to be meeting to be discussing in detail the building and trying to solidify things into paper. So, so be praying for us. It wins all week, but, but even for that favor and provision, but especially even Wednesday night. So God's about to do something. So the building is going to be a great part of it. It's not the only part. We might actually see a whole lot more happen outside the building than we do in the building. But that's going to be a beautiful home base for us to see what God does. So I'm excited. <laughs> um, continually amazed at what God does. Um, yeah. So that's that. And of course the giving. I always miss that. You know where my heart's at. I don't care about it. Um, but it's required. The boxes. But it, but it is. It's required. It's, it's biblical. So you know what? And there's huge blessings from it. So, yeah. so, so it is something I tell you to... Let God, let God talk to you about. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, of course, the traditional ways over here with the boxes, um, the scan thing on the back of the brochure, um, and even if you're online, uh, just go to the website, and that's the other way. Um, but you can just go to the website, um, firehouseir.com, uh, slash give, or I think there's even a give tab or button on yes. it, right? Yes. So there's yeah. that. And then there's and, the... um, for those that want the app, Church Center, you can download that and it will find that here. Um, so to require more on, you know, if you're online or at home? If you do it from online and you're not in this location, it won't find this church. You just have to make sure you're picking the correct firehouse. Yeah, so <laughs> if, you're, if you're using the app and you're not here and you're at home or online somewhere, Make sure you, you're picking this firehouse. Make sure church. it's got our logo There's, and such. Yeah, with our yeah. logo, you, you, know, you can verify that it's us. Because mm -hmm. um, there is a couple firehouses um, across the nation, believe yeah. it or not. So, all right. Yeah. Did I get it all? I think so. I think so. That's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Want to invite the Holy Spirit this morning? Yes. I guess more. Yeah. You stand with me? More. Well, that's just war. Storm's over. Amen. We declare peace. <laughs> and we declare that the, the brass heavens are broken and that yes. there is no oppression. That's right. Nothing that can hold back and there is a release happening. And so, Father, I just thank you for your love. And I thank you, Father, that, that you love us so much to send your son. And I thank you that we have been given unto him. And I thank you that you have already brought the kingdom. And so I declare the kingdom has come. And so in the name of Jesus, I just declare peace and declare that Florida will be saved, 
and that there will be provision and that yes. there will be many that come to know you and know your, you by you need an encounter with your presence. So Lord, this morning as we worship, may this be worn to heavenly. May it be a sweet and utter offering, a uh, sweet offering unto you, Lord God. And I just thank you, Lord, that it will break through every barrier in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus. Huh? Holy Spirit, comes. Let's worship. Be free to worship, stand, sit, dance, uh, whatever. Uh, altars open if you need prayer. You don't have to wait for somebody to, to tell you if you need to come forward. Uh, even for those that need to lay across the there's room somewhere. Uh, Craig will have the mic here if you have a word. Be free. Know that there is freedom here. So we want, we want, God's going to speak this morning. Holy Spirit comes. It's to be loved. It's to be loved by you. To be loved. It's to be loved by you. To be loved. It's to be loved by you.
We are more than conquerors. All you have to say is a name and things change. Yes. So I say the name of Jesus to change this atmosphere. Yes. Right now, yes. this atmosphere would flood with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And Jesus. Fall, and people's hungers would stir. Yes. Right now. Yes. There's a hunger. Oh, there's a hunger. There's a hunger that arrives, that arrives. There's a hunger. There's a hunger. Yes, there is. There's a hunger. There's a hunger. There's a hunger. That's right. We will pay no mind, no attention. That's and we're right. We're not going to ride because we don't have to strive to overcome this. Amen. We get to rest. And the enemy loosens because he has no hold here. That's right. So sweep us away, Lord. Take us past the clouds. Thank you. 
to go deeper but it's in every single person they've got to make the choice and say I'm going to lay aside all the stuff that's in my mind I'm going to lay aside everything and I'm going to dive deeper into who you are Lord. I'm going to let your presence come in I'm going to ignore every distraction I'm going to lay my heart bare before you and I'm going to go deeper I promise you that the enemy does not want us to go deep into the presence of God. The enemy does not want to see you free. He does not want to see you released. He doesn't want to see this be the day of your deliverance. I promise you, he does not. So right now, we don't partner here with him. We partner with Jesus. And we release every thought in our head that's otherwise. And we just say, Lord, it's you and me. I don't care who's around. I don't care what's going on. It's you and it's me. Go deeper. You get to go as deep as you want. The pool is wide open. You pay.
I just want to speak over you real quick. In that desire, it, it's funny because there was a, a Bible that Isaac had that was given to him, some um, freebies to give away. And um, uh, when he was up in D.C. and it was opened, one of them was ironically folded open, over. actually folded over. Um, so something or an angel folded it over and it was the Psalms 51. And even this morning, I just kept being drawn back to that this morning. And uh, so in that same call to go deeper, I want to read this to you because, and, and just really, I'm going to read in the Passion. Let this take hold in, in us right now. Uh, because everything that you hear, you'll see there's references to it in His love. In His love, His mercy, His grace, and His love. And there's a call unto the even more purity, Lord. May it take it all away. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start from verse 1. It says, God, give me mercy from your fountain of forgiveness. I know your abundant love is enough to wash away all my guilt. Yes. Because your compassion is so great, take away the shameful guilt of sin. And guilt was one of three things that, as we were praying in the parking lot, was it shame, guilt, and unforgiveness. Shame, guilt, and unforgiveness to be released. Things that are holding us back. Yep. Amen. And blame. And, and blame. blame. And blame. Yes. Yep. Shame, blame. Yeah. Because, um, because your compassion is so great, take away this shameful guilt of, uh, guilt of sin. Forgive the full extent of my rebellious ways and erase this deep stain from my conscience. So yes, many Lord. won't allow that stain to go that, that, and they wear a scarlet letter when nobody's put it on them. Yeah. And God doesn't require it. Let the stain yes. go. Yes. yes. For I'm so, for I'm so ashamed. I feel such pain and anguish within me. I can't get away from the sting of my sin against you, Lord. He can't. It's not saying God's doing it. Everything I did, I did right in front of you, for you saw it all. Against you and above all, I have sinned. Everything you say to me is infallibly true, and your judgment conquers me. Lord, I have been a sinner from birth from the moment my mother conceived me. I know that you delight to set your truth deep in my spirit. Is truth. Yes. Not shame, not guilt, not, not anything, not condemnation. His truth. He delights to set it deep in my spirit. So come into the hidden places of my heart and teach me wisdom, Lord. Purify my conscience. Make this leper clean again. Again, wash me in your love until I am pure in heart. Yes. His true love that brings complete cleansing. Yes. Satisfy me in your sweetness and my song of joy will re return. Did you hear that? Satisfy me in your sweetness and my song of joy will return. The places within me you have crushed and I and will rejoice in your healing touch. Hide my sins from your face. Erase all my guilt from your saving grace. Create a new, clean heart within me. Fill me with pure thoughts and holy desires ready to, to please you. May you never reject me. May you never take your, your may you never take from me your sacred spirit. Let my passion for life be restored. Amen. Tasting joy in every breakthrough you bring to me. Amen. Hold me close to you with a willing spirit that obeys whatever you say. Then I can show to other guilty ones how loving and merciful you are. Amen. They will find their way back home to you, knowing that you will forgive them. Yes. Oh God, my saving God, deliver me from every sin, even the sin that brought blood guilt. Then my heart will once again be thrilled to sing the passionate songs of joy and deliverance. 
Lord God, unlock my heart, unlock my lips, and I will overcome with my joyous praise. For the source of your pleasure is not in my, in my performance. For the source of your pleasure is not in my performance or the sacrifices I may offer you. The fountain of your pleasure is found in the sacrifice of my shattered heart before you. You will not despise my tenderness as I humbly bow down at your feet. Because you favor Zion, do what is good for her. Be protecting wall, be the protecting wall around Jerusalem. Yes, Lord. That's you. And when we are fully restored, you will rejoice and take delight in every offering of our lives as we bring sacrifices of righteousness, righteousness before you in love. Major distortions of love, major distortions of identity. And he's saying, you're mine. I love you. I am yes. merciful. My grace yes. is an outpouring of grace. Yes. And then he's calling them to his bride right now to come deeper. Come away with me. Trim the wigs. Get ready. Get fueled up. And now's the time. And so that call unto a deeper spot with him is even saying, hey, will you take hold of the full identity of my name I have given to you. Yes. You can be betrothed and be ready to be married and know that this is the most amazing thing but almost be afraid to take it and, and even walk in it because you're maybe still ashamed of yourself. Yes. We must even choose to lay down those false images. Yes. Yep. Amen. Take hold of your real identity. Yes. yes. Press in. He doesn't see any of it. Let all the scarlet wash away. Yes. So I just declare that love and that mercy over this body and the, and the call for deep. And I think that the deep calls in the deep. Yes. And they're going to continue to, to go deeper with you, Lord, and deeper passion. I thank you, Lord, that you are the protecting walls around your people. So, Father, draw us unto you. New depths, new relationship. Just a new cleansing right now. And every distortion must go in the name of Jesus. So, as we as we even move forward, just, just take hold of that. Declare that over yourself. Yes. Declare that over, over anything else that's holding you back. Things that just keep looming over you. Even, even um, um, iniquities or um, afflictions or sickness no the kingdom has come no more identifying with it praise him worship your God glory in the fact that you are his bride yes get ready let's go let's go deeper let's go deeper yes
can't breathe. We can't breathe. Just take it away. forgive me for holding on to disappointment because you haven't done what I felt like you should do and I am sorry Lord forgive me Lord because the yes. truth is you are good no matter how I feel you are good no matter what I walk through you are good when I don't understand so I release disappointment and I ask yes. for forgiveness Lord yes Lord more just speak it out yeah. okay so that word we had this morning about um, shame blame and unforgiveness um, the hardest one to forgive is yourself yeah that's the hardest one because you replay it over and over and the Lord has just been showing me lately, don't let your emotions be your God. I'm your God, and I forgive it all, and I release it all. It's gone, as though it never happened. And so there's something my husband and I used to do, um, children's church. And so we taught everything at a very basic level. And nine times out of ten, when I was te teaching the basics, they ministered to me as much more than they did to the children. And the one thing I want to tell everybody here, all of you, there's not one thing you could do or have done that will make God love you any less. Yes. But there's also not one thing you could do or have done that will make Him love you any more. Right. His love is not earned, it's given. Yes. His love is not, His love is true, unconditional love. We don't earn it. We receive it. We receive it. So lay now, Father. We lay all the shame, yes. all the blame, and all the unforgiveness we hold towards others and towards ourselves at the foot of your cross. We do not exalt our emotions any longer. Lord, we receive your love, your forgiveness. We receive it. And another thing I've been, that, I, that the Lord reminded me of this morning is we can't help what birds fly over our head, what thoughts come our way. We can't help that. They come. But it's our choice which ones we allow to nest. So no more building nests of these thoughts or these, of these uh, things that play out in your head. Be free forever. And when those things come, shake them them off. I have what I call my flicker ministry. You just flick them. Say, nope, that's not mine, and I don't receive it. I'm his, and I receive his forgiveness and his love, and I will receive no less. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name, and we seal it in your mighty, precious blood. Amen. Lord, 
Mocha ma chanchedo, diaste mo kunya tendo, la banda manha, hua chama chanchemo, son prahana pokianda, do yante mo tomasa, son prashama nyo, o yaki to go napa, bo shanda mondo, do bo shama lebo to o tamayada, do yama no 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 no, kian peso ma kisi tio da napasa, lo shang yang bokosha. Prashama yang de toto to honda bada. Prashanya te, totonya hana prayasha, sonya te bodo. For I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God who is with you. I am the Lord most high. I would not leave you or forsake you. You resemble me because I am in you and you are in me and we are one. So no, 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 don't listen to the enemy. Listen to me. Listen to my voice and what I have to say to you. Because my voice is stillness in the middle of a storm. My voice will conquer everything the enemy wants to bring you down with. But this day, no. I am in you and you are in me. So release all that stuff. Finalized. Finished. Done. Wiped away. No longer. For you keep your head up and your eyes set on me, and I will shine brightly through you all over. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I saw the Holy Ghost. Yeah. He is sweeping over this place. Holy Ghost, you're welcome in this place. You sealed everything. You finished everything. It's a new day. It's a new way. We are looking at you. We are keeping our eyes set like flint. Holy Spirit, just come. Touch our hearts. Touch our minds. Come and fill us up and saturate us. Because we need your voice. We need to hear what the Father is saying to us. We need to hear what Jesus is doing around us and with us. So teach us, equip us, let us know who you are, Holy Spirit, because we don't know you. There's more and more and more of you, because you are God. There is no other. So come, Holy Ghost. Come like a mighty rushing wind and sweep through our lives and our family's lives. And let us never be the same from this point. Let that not just be words, Lord, but let that be bonded in us sealed in us that we are yours i my beloved my beloved's and he is mine and just one more thing i saw somebody with sciatica and you're being healed right now if that's you you need to just grab that this is your day and your hour you put up with this stuff long enough i put up with it long enough i put up with it i just had a report from the doctor but guess what the Lord's going to heal my vocal cords. He's going to restore what the enemy stole Amen. so that I have my voice Amen. back and do what he's called Amen. me to do. Amen. 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 My voice back too. When, when the day of Pentecost came, it says that the people were gathered in one mind, in unity. They had one thought, one mind. They were all together. So I just have one thought at the moment that I want everybody just to agree with me in your heart, if you agree. But agree, because it's good agree. <laughs> and this is the thought. This is the thing that I, this is my prayer I'm going to pray out as one of the pastors in this church. Lord, we want you to have your will and your way. We don't want our own. You don't have to show up the way we want you to. You don't have to do it the way we want you to do it. You get to do it your way. You have free reign in this house, Lord. You have free reign. So we ask you, Lord, to come and do this your way. Set your people free in your way. Come with your presence in your way. Lord, we love you and we serve you. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. I agree. I agree. Amen. So, on the subject of bonfires, <laughs> I feel like there is one going right now, yeah. and it's the offering that we are supposed to put our hearts onto. Yes. And our hearts are going to burn up. And all of that bad 
and everything that was spoken over you, any of the darkness that was in your heart, that is ash that is coming off and out of that yes. is the yes. phoenix, that is the new heart that God is giving you, and it is on fire for Amen. him. Amen. So yes, lay Lord. your heart on that bonfire, yep. because it yes. is on the altar. blazing high. Yes, amen. <laughs> amen. I'm going to reference real Scott real. Yeah, no. No, come here. I'm not going to. Yeah, not mine yet. Go ahead. So the Lord's obviously been talking to me, working on me, refining me. I try and get out of the way. I always get in the way. <laughs> You've heard Paul say that the word of God is good for breaking down strongholds, yes. speculations. Anything that would rise itself up against the knowledge of Him. The Word of God. Yes. What is the Word of God? Jesus is the living Word. Well, the Word was with God. Yeah, made flesh. Amen. The Word is God. Yes. What is God? Love. Love. Love will raise itself up yes. against any stronghold. Amen. 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 <laughs> against Amen. any speculation. Amen. Against any false identity. Yes. Yes. I work in mental health. I see false identities every day. I'm coming up against strongholds every day. And because of the way we're licensed, I can't lead with God. Yeah. I can't lead with God. But boy, do I bring God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and here's how I bring God. When I look that person in the eye, and I show them complete acceptance yeah. for Amen. where they are. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I always get emotional because this is what God did for me. Amen. And now I get to do it for others. Yes. Yes. I get to lead with love. And I've seen people get saved without me even talking to them about Jesus. Hallelujah, <laughs> yeah. go. I've seen people turn corners in their lives without them even hearing the scriptures. Yes, Because the love that is in me permeates the air so much that they can't deny it. The heart is convicted and begins to surrender. And they realize they don't have to carry the identity anymore. I love what I do, but it's hard work. It's hard work breaking down strongholds. But remember, we don't. The love of God does. And complete acceptance, complete love of those who are hurting will break down any stronghold. Yes. Any stronghold. Love. It's so simple. The Word. The Word was with God. The Word is God. God is love. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Let my passion for life be restored. Yes. Taking joy in every breakthrough you have, the breakthrough you bring to me. Hold me close to you with a willing spirit that obeys whatever you say. Then I can show to other guilty ones how loving and merciful you are. Yes. They will find their way back home knowing that you will forgive them. Amen. There's been quite a story. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's not. The biggest thing I've seen distorted in the church is love in the last 10 years. Yes. Of course, that's what the enemy wants to 
take out because he, he doesn't want you to want anybody to receive the true love of God. Yes. What does it mean to bring true freedom? You know what? God's bringing it here. Yeah. And you know what? Distortions can only stay for so long until truth is revealed. Amen. And now's the time. Jesus referenced Isaiah 61 right after he'd gone through the fire of being tempted and all of that. He goes right into the temple as he normally would in red. Once he read, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Amen. The oppressive brass skies are broken. Yes. Amen. And I don't know if you have you read Isaiah 61 because when you go on and read Isaiah 61, it talks about beauty for ashes. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord. Taking all the shame and bringing yes. His joy as a blanket. Yes. Amen. It doesn't sound like you have to wear any shame. It's covering it all with His joy. Amen. These three got to go on a trip across Florida, as we talked about, right? And when we were praying about it and just joining even some of the things, and, and they got to see even a portion of that being outpoured right now. Amen, amen. Yeah. And there has been a great outpouring that's been happening in South Florida. Amen. And even when we got the report back from these three, day before my birthday, we went, well... I'm off work tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> and we felt, felt it there. But you know, it's funny what was being said in my car on the way home. That we knew that we felt it. I'm reluctant to say this, but I'm just going to say it. We actually walked away from there going, Lord, it felt just like what we feel here. Amen. Yep. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Fire's burning. We don't have to go anywhere. Yes. He's restoring your joy. Yes. Your passion. Passion for life. Your passion for life. You know, when Pentecost came, and it's it just so funny that we ended up back, you know, we're, you know, start studying Acts this year, and where did we end up last week? Acts chapter 2, Pentecost. And I didn't need to preach because we saw the Holy Spirit just pouring out. That was everything. It brought complete restoration. It was pouring out his spirit, just as he had promised. And it hasn't changed. Yeah. As we even began to experience last week. There's more happening right now. Yes. All of it was even signs for the unbelievers, those that hadn't even seen and been with Jesus. Yeah. How is it that they're speaking in my language? So many different things were happening. And I have known people that have had her languages given to them that have ended up in other countries and gone, do you know what you're saying? Right. <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. So don't take it for granted what's what you're experiencing. And you know what? He's restoring it here. Mm -hmm. yes. He's pouring it out. And that's why so many have, have already felt it. And there's more this morning. Yes. It's not by chance that everyone is here is here. That's right. He's got great plans for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want more? Mm -hmm. Yes. 
deeper. Peter stood up and began to proclaim Joel 2. And he was pouring out his spirit. That was Peter finally standing up and grasping who he was and his identity. When just before that, he had fallen, denied him three times. I can't imagine the agony that he felt in himself thinking I had, you know, it happened. Just like he said, it happened. It was a crushing time. It was also building time. It was in that crushing moment that it was building who he needed to be. When, when the Spirit of God was poured out there at Pentecost, i got to say that that was probably part of that moment where it began to hit Peter when Jesus looked at him and said, Do you burn with passion? me that's not in something weird I'm saying that I that, do you love me with everything like a bride would to, his, to her bridegroom do you feel the same love I feel towards you I think he got it for a moment because he, he received when he received the Holy Spirit it poured it out on him and it wiped everything away Now's your time. We carry things so often. It's time to release it. Yeah. You know what I... <laughs> These two last night were giving reports, and, and if you want to speak for just a second, you can, about the fact of, of even a little bit of disbelief that you, you had hinted on, Right? Yeah, I think that we both just questioned, you know, the miracles and signs of the signs and wonders. People say they're not for now, and I know that's not biblical, but we have never experienced personal physical healing or, like, seeing anybody, you know, healed. Um, and the Lord is doing something big and something different, and we're not in a third world country, but, like, there's a third world country like raging in people's yes. hearts. Yes. 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 Raging in people's hearts. The hunger, the desperation yes. in people's hearts. And God is answering those cries. Yes. Two, the, those two nights, the first two nights we were there, the whole field, everyone was on their knees. Thousands of people just on their knees. The presence of God was so thick and they were outside open air and there was just this beautiful heaviness and envelopment of the Lord and when we were praising him and singing Yeshua he would send a little rainbow just a little piece and just long enough for Sean to acknowledge it and then as soon as he acknowledged it and everybody in the field saw it would go away he's hearing us he he is answering our prayers. Tyler was freed from a nicotine addiction. Praise God. Oh, wow. And when I say free from it, like, there's really no agitation. There's no, I need that withdrawal symptom that that happens. He's tried to quit five or six times. And he's almost unbearable right this time. But this time is different because God's doing a new thing. Amen. He's doing a new thing. <laughs> Listen, we have to bear it all before the Lord, right? Full honesty, full transparency. Yep. Amen. Then 20, I'm, I'm 24, and let's see, I was born, and then like two months later, I was in the nursery at Sun Coast, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I've, in the whole time of my church, I've been in church, like, I've heard about signs and wonders and everything. Just, you know, a little bit of disbelief in those kinds of things had been able to set in from uh, experiencing them. And there was a lady who just, ah, man, sorry. <laughs> her name was Patty. Her, her, her name, yeah. She had a no sound tattoo on the left side behind her ear and a collicular implant because she couldn't hear naturally. She traveled, she traveled 
all over the nation. Surgery after surgery, trying to restore her hearing. Right, for 11 years. And our group prayed with her. The wow. Lord moved, and she could hear with wow. her. Right before yes. our eyes. Yes. And then I got healed with a nicotine addiction. Amen. Amen. And Thank it's just you, Lord. Like, I'm telling you guys, I mean, the lady who walked away with sciatic or problems completely gone. Yeah. It built his like, faith enough to ask for healing from that nicotine addiction. Seeing yes. that built his faith enough. And God restored. Yes. Awesome. If you guys are in need of healing, that, just because <laughs> we got healed and we saw healing doesn't mean you can't be. God's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. God just wants to just break every like disillusionment, every yeah. like jaded thought that you yes. have. Yes. He just wants you all to chase him. Yeah. Amen. He just, does. Amen. He just wants you to love him as much as he loves you. Yes. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter how hard it is, no matter how hard it was, what you've experienced, God died for it all. Yes. Any affliction, any abuse, it doesn't matter. It, it does matter to you at like a level that we don't understand because we're not you. But guess what? God was there when it happened. And God is there at the end. He's the beginning and the end. So if there's anything that's in anyone's hearts here this morning that has been bothering you for whether it's two days or it's two decades, whether it's your whole life, it doesn't matter. God is here this morning and he's waiting for you. Amen. Because he has something for you. Yes. And that's deliverance. That's yeah. healing. Yeah. That's restoration. Yes. yes. Earlier we were talking about forgiveness, and there are still people here that are not forgiving themselves. They're believing the lie of the enemy that they're not worthy. That who am I to be forgiven by God when God has already forgiven us? When we pick that back up, we're saying God's not big enough. Don't believe the enemy. Amen. So Dave, when I told him about what was going on down South Fork, he also went down. And you just, if you want to share that one thing that you even sensed. Yeah, so after Shane was talking about it, I, I looked it up and just thought God was like, go. <laughs> and I had two sessions that I had to do on Saturday morning, but I could figure anything out. Went down there last Friday and Saturday. I feel like I'm supposed to say something else. <laughs> you know, this is why we need the youth. Yes. Yes. Because we forget these wonderful things that God does. And the exuberance when we saw it the first time. Yes. 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 <laughs> and what can happen is we can get so used to the miracles, the signs, that we forget. We forget. When I was in Bible school in 2010, I was doing internship at a local church. I was part of my, our ministry there. And they put me on hospital visits. And so I go to this room, I'm going from room to room, we just pray with the people, and I walk into this room and said, I'm, I'm here to see Gloria Rodriguez. And two nurses were holding, one was holding each arm, and she was hanging, she was hanging just in a, a blank stare. She had had a triple brain hemorrhage and a stroke mm. and a dead stare. And here I am, <laughs> ministry guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray. I felt this big. And the nurse just looks at me and goes, well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and I just 
got down on my knee. And I can't even really remember the prayer I said. But I remember being so in touch with my helplessness, my weakness, my weakness. The next day I came back, I didn't even really want to go in the room. Because of what we do then. <laughs> and I came to the door, and there was a woman sitting next to her at her bed. And I said, I'm here to see Gloria. My name is David from Gospel Lighthouse. And the lady goes, this is David from Gospel Lighthouse. And she looks over and goes, I know, he prayed for me yesterday. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My knees almost buckled. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Thank you. I went and sat next to her. My knees were ready to give out. I said, Gloria. <laughs> Gloria. Praise God. <laughs> Gloria. She goes, I knew Jesus would heal me. <laughs> Jesus. We forget. Yeah. We forget. And that's why we need the youth. Yes. Jesus wants to move. Yes. He wants children. Yes. Who are weak. Yeah. Who know their weakness. Yes but know his strength. Yes. And before I go today, I don't know who you are, sir, but God has put an anointing on your life. There was a call on your life at one time, and you might have missed that call, but God wants you to know it's never over. Mm, yes, Lord. No matter what's happened, no matter what you have been through, it is never over. Never. 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 You, you are his son. You are his son. And that will never change. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Commission, right? Right before all the Pentecost and all that. He said to go preach the gospel, right? Proclaim it to all the world. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. He also said, wait. So, what? what do you <laughs> he also said that to people that had just betrayed him and <laughs> ran away. And he knew they needed the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because it's all through that. And it was through the love. That's right. Let me remind you, what's the gospel? What is the good news? It's this love. It's this acceptance. It's this everything's washed away. It's all it, through Jesus and through him and him alone. We receive it all new. We can get a new heart. We yes. can have all of those pains and things healed. Yes. Yes. Through Him. Only through Him. Sometimes we even forget what the good news is. Sometimes we need a remembrance. And it's that outpouring of His love that comes and brushes all that away. One little thought that keeps echoing in my heart over and over and over again. Shane talked about the beauty for ashes. When we went to Toronto, as a lot of you guys know, we had to get a miracle for our son to get a brain put in his head. And it happened, and our boy's fine, and he's like, take care, baby. But the beauty for ashes thing. Two ladies that didn't know me from anybody prophesied over me, and they said, I hear the word Phoenix over you because... The enemy has done his darndest to burn your life to the ground. Yes. But the thing is, is that those who have lost everything are incredibly dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. So I want to tell you today, 
If you've got a lot of ashes, guess what you get to trade it for? So there's two things I have that have been coming out of me. One of them were being spoken out last night that he was trying to drive out. And that was doubt. There's two things that you hear Jesus uttering to the disciples over and over. Do not yield to fear. So he wants to make you fear. What if that doesn't work? What if they don't feel nothing? Ooh, I'm big and bad. No, you're not, devil. I know who my Jesus is. That's and you right. Have no teeth. They were taken out of your mouth. And I will not give them back to you. Because through Jesus, you have none. And he says, Why do you doubt? So I say to you, Why do you doubt? Do not yield to fear, and why do you doubt? Do you know who your God is? I have prayed at times and not seen anything happen. I have prayed and seen people release the things immediately that blew my mind that it even happened. Because in the time that I even prayed, I wasn't sure I had enough, enough faith for it. I'll be honest. I've seen kidney stones go boom. People's knees with doctor's records of several years' conditions. Even recently, we had stand here and say, it's gone. The doctors even said it's gone. You know what? It's not, it's not the end of it. It's the beginning. And he's rising up his body and saying, don't live in fear and don't doubt. I'm behind you. Receive my love. Receive a new touch of my spirit. And I second that. I don't know what it is, but there was something over you that I kept. So if you saw me look over your way, I was sensing the same thing. Like there's something. God's got something for you. I heard it. So, <laughs> so he's got something for a, a lot of all of you in here. Okay. All of you. But just sometimes it has to be spoken out. So here's the, here's the moment. Yeah. Are we ready? Do we want it more? Yeah. Give all doubt and all fear away. Hallelujah. And you know what? Sometimes it takes a step forward to actually say, I'm going to push past the there doubt and the fear. There is no COVID in here. I declare that over Psalm 91, period. Okay, so there's no fear of that at all. And so even now, I'm going to make it, make it make this calling. Those that are ready for more, let's step forward. Amen. One big family, let's just step forward. Yes. <laughs> And we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to come and pour it out.
but to bow. Chains have no choice but to break. Shame has no choice but to leave in your presence. Fear has no choice but to bow. Chains have no choice but to break. Shame has no choice but to leave in your presence. Fear has no choice but to bow. Chains have no choice but to break. She has the choice but to leave in your presence. Here I have the choice but to bow. She has the choice but to break. She has the choice but to leave in your presence.
he perceiving, okay? Stay soaking in what he's doing. We do not want to leave this moment, okay? But just even now, we're going to get some room for some testimony. So you just stay where you're at. No, you just stay in it, soak in, okay? So I was sitting in the back in worship, and the Lord just said, get laid down and just so and um, just receive. And, and that's what I've been doing the last couple of days, coming back to that place of soaking. But um, I saw, because uh, he showed me, I used to have done a bar at the but he showed me um, golden, golden oil drops in this room. And when you all were up front, up front I just saw the golden drops on you and coming down, and then I just saw like pillars with the oil running down, and it was golden oil, so receive that. Stop doubting. Stop doubting. And, 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 and I was in Toronto too a few times, and I went not expecting anything. I went as a skeptic. And I walked in the lobby as a skeptic and fell out in the lobby. And, and I couldn't get to my seat. That was my concern. And, but here's what happened. I had been working on forgiveness. And we've been talking about identity, right? I had been working on forgiveness for my earthly father for 18 years. Wow. And many times I thought I had forgiven. Only a few years later to find out that there was still anger and rage. And this is a word for you. <laughs> that until that healing came, I could just only theology in that the thinking about he, about forgiving. I know But it was in that moment that they all laid hands on about three thousand people. And I go, what do you do when they lay and fall out? What are you supposed to do? Well, somebody said, just lay there. Because Holy Spirit wants to minister. So I just laid there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I heard my the cry from the deepest part of me after 18 years of counseling, of 12 step, of, of writing all the. But Jesus showed me he was with me when I was like four or five years old, when the abuse had started, right? And I was there an hour, like a primordial cry coming out. He touched a place, he was with little Jimmy, and he was healing little Jimmy. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And when I sat up and the Holy Spirit lifted about an hour or so, I sat up in a tangible presence of unconditional forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. And that was 2006. It's never left. And in 2012, I was the sole trustee of my father's estate well, and taking care of him at 90 years old. I could never have taken care of my daddy. My dad became my daddy at that moment in Toronto. And that's what I found, the miracle, the greater miracle, was he was still the tyrant. But the love of the Father coming through a tender heart, a healed heart, changed him. Yes. Without me trying or preaching nothing. It was the unconditional, the Father, love coming yes. through me for the abuser. And he was so radically changed. So I just want to share with you, keep working at it, keep going after that forgiveness, do whatever you have to do, get help in every area of your life, but uh, Jesus is the final healer. Amen. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. He's got to heal the woundedness um, to, so you can forgive. Yeah. Is that good? And then one more thing. Because I don't know any area, and I love that. <laughs> About, I was in Cali Central California, my first state. I came, went back to California, helped my dad and his wife eight years ago. He passed, and I wound up in Fresno. I don't know if you know where that is. <laughs> Fresno's in that Bible Belt of California. I didn't know. It's all liberal to me. <laughs> and, and the Lord said, start a prayer, do your prayer tape again. I was like, what? What? So I, I said, I know this little crazy area in downtown, eclectic Fresno. 
there's a couple of empty lots. So on a Saturday morning, I went to set up a prayer tent. I was scared because nobody would go with me. And I had, ooh, prayer signs that said, do you need prayer, question mark. I just painted them. And the minute I put that case of water down, people started coming in. Wow, that's exciting. <laughs> and then a woman, I posted on Facebook to make the church jealous. <laughs> True <laughs> confession. <laughs> because so many people were coming in for prayer, cars and homeless and people with families. And that's exciting. It was like wacky, right? Yeah. Oh my God. And this one woman, Linda, who was so timid, she said, I'm afraid, but I want to go with you. And she is 60 years old, been in church all her life. And we set up that prayer tent. And I want to encourage you, get outside the walls because that's yeah. where the miracles yeah. are. Yeah. The yeah. Holy yeah. Spirit would fill the tent as we set it up. And all we would just be is like vessels and it was like the presence <laughs> of the Lord. And we saw, we saw and no preacher hyping here. He doesn't need that. No. We saw everybody we prayed for get healed for six months. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 Hundreds of people come to the Lord. Every age, every financial bracket, everything just kept coming, and then the testimonies would keep coming back. And then a church started under a bridge from that. Come <laughs> church the walls. And it's still there four years later. Wow. Wow. Right? So that's all. But be healed. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Let him heal, and then the forgiveness, it yes. just happens, you know? Yes. yes. Amen. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. More testimonies. So I just want to piggyback on that. Um, Thank actually, you. last night, because we're, we're planning big outreaches and big crusades and so yeah. forth, but that takes a lot of planning. It takes a little bit of time. Okay. And we're getting antsy. We're all getting antsy. We want to get out of these walls and go get them. They're not coming. They're not coming. Don't care how pretty we sing. Sorry. I don't care how well we preach. Sorry. I don't care what our program is. They're not coming. We gotta go get them. And so last night on the way home, my husband and I were talking about it because we're helping with some of the outreach and stuff. And we used to get with um, Doug Addison, and he used to set up. Prayer tents, and he used to set up. He would just set up little tables with a little cover, and it would just say, uh, "Do you need prayer or dream interpretation or that?" And my husband Mike said, "Well, we can do that now. That doesn't take any planning. We can just go out and start doing it." So that's what we're going to do. Anybody who wants to come, you're welcome to come. If you feel like you need training to know how to do it, because you're feeling adequate, we'll train you. Come to our house, and we'll just have a little. Mm -hmm. yeah. we'll, we'll just, <laughs> oops. <laughs> but we'll just, we'll, we'll teach you on how to go out, how to talk to people. Basically, like they said, you just be yourself and let the Holy Ghost flow for you. But we'll, we'll give you confidence to do that. That's the one thing I want to say. So we're going to do that. And then the other thing I want to say, the Lord sent me over to my precious, precious, precious spiritual daughter, Alexi. And he had me do something that all of you that are of a certain age, Let's do it together. I want to repent of the way we dropped the ball for this generation. I want to repent of, because when they were gone for the revival, the Lord reminded me, because they were so excited and everything, the Lord reminded me, they haven't seen the revival. They haven't seen the acts of We saw them, but we didn't steward them, right? And we just kind of got complacent and got back onto life as usual. We don't want life as usual. And how many times have you heard someone of a certain age talk bad about the millennials? Or even the Gen Xers. I guess the Gen Xers are now a certain age, but whatever. I'm a, uh, what do you call that? The warning. Boomer? Yeah, I'm a boomer, whatever. I, I don't label myself. But I just want to repent. And so right now, we repent of letting this generation just go. We repent of us dropping the ball and not teaching them about the things of the Lord and not yeah. teaching them about the power of God and not teaching them what it means to see signs and wonders and, and to, to demonstrate those signs and wonders. We repent of letting that fire grow dim. And right now, we call the millennials and we tell them, you are loved. 
you are welcome, you are wanted, and most of all, you are needed. Yes. We need your youth. Yes. We have the wisdom, and the wisdom and the youth coming together. Oh, buddy, we're going to take the city with the youth and the wisdom when we come together. So we're just saying those two streams are going to come together and flow out of this house. The yes. youth and the wisdom, yes. we're going to be one, and we're going to take the city, yes. we're going to take the area, and then we're going to take the state in Jesus' name. Yes. I don't want to eat the cigarette. I love to smoke cigarette. <laughs> but the Lord decided, I love your baby. <laughs> I never, ever was able to smoke or even smell any smoke. So thanks to him. Another thing is, when he was talking, I'm a nurse and I'm a natural therapist. There's many great memories. It came back to me also for healings. Because God is healed and still today. So today I was standing on my place and it was a worship and was talking about healing in this place. Um, hope knows um, I was marked for that a couple of times. Pardon sensitive. So I'm facing uh, more doctor's appointment, but one of them, which is really bad of me this morning, I have a cervical six and seven station and the pain was just horrible. And I just felt that I was denied this pain. I'm perfectly healed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And it's never oh. ever happened to my life. Yes. And I'm waiting for the negative result from my endocrinologist. In yes. And the negative, I cannot negative because I was uh, heritage from my father's family. I already had my echocardio test Tuesday. And I'm going to see more doctors, but I'm ready to receive all negative results. Yes. All right. So she's been told really bad things by doctors, but as we know, and we've even gone through this with our son, the doctors can have facts, but we know the truth. Right. So I want everybody to reach your hand towards her. We're going to say this three times. I want you to declare: You will live and not die. You will live and not. I still know that there's uh, there's some in here that still haven't gotten the freedom yet. And um, you know, all of us, every single person in here has something to overcome. Yes. Uh, we've all got stuff. We've all got something big, something major that we have to overcome. Nobody's exempt from life. And the Holy Spirit is not going to shame you. He's not going to expose you. He, that's the devil does that. The Holy Spirit is not going to. You don't want anybody to know what that deep dark secret. is. Nobody has to know. It's you and Jesus. But sometimes you got to elbow your way through the crowd and get to the front. Sometimes you got to be the woman that, that yes. had to go in, and it wasn't lawful for her to do it. She had the issue of blood. It was against the law for her to touch anybody or in that crowd. She was supposed to be isolated in a tent. But she went up and she touched his hem, which was not lawful. Jesus is here. His hem of the garment is here. The kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God is here. Yes. It's the Father's good pleasure to give it to us. It's his good pleasure to save, heal, and deliver. Yes. Nobody needs to walk out that door empty or broken. But like I said, not, not, it's not going to be called out. It's not going to be shamed. 
But any, and, and even if you walk up today, ah, you're not ready. Come back, come back. Okay, keep coming. And when you are, like I said, sometimes you can sit in the back and we try to be polite. And you don't want to, no, come on. You know, I've had to do this in my life. Just get in the front, get up here. And or, or you're going to wait and think, okay, it's just subsided now. <laughs> come on, we'll still gather around you. Pray for you. I guarantee you, whatever it is, somebody in here has been through it, or even worse. Um, so real quick, if that's you, um, push through over here. I'm going to continue to walk around with the opportunity for as either those that want further prayer can get prayer. It, it doesn't have to be for some big bad thing. It can be even that you just want more of him and just saying enough's enough of whatever it is that you, that's been moving and feeling. You know, so it's not a scarlet letter. Full release. So, um, and, and I want to say this. If right now you've been going, okay, I, I don't know that I'm quite feeling like what I'm seeing others mm. around here. It looks like they're feeling. You want more? Come on up. Come on. So I, <laughs> yeah. even as I continue to go around, um, I, it's not just... A, I don't have to pray for you. Any, anybody up here can pray for you right now if you yes. want more. So come on up, okay? I'm going to just keep, I'm going to walk around. If you want to give testimony, give testimony. No pressure. I just want to share about what happened for me last week. Um, I always knew that something was going on, and um, I had a doctor give me a diagnosis of a disorder that I knew was really causing me a lot of problems and it was really making issues in my family and I had to be on medication that was just messing my body up so that I would be normal and um, God just completely took that right Come out on. last week right. I had Gigi and Isaac's hands on me and I could see that it was a bat that was stuck into me and its teeth and its claws were in me and it was sucking the life and the blood out of me and God just threw it away. <laughs> he is so ready to do that with everyone else. Yeah, amen. And uh, I keep having to blow on my hands. They're on fire. <laughs> space to set aside that's out against this church. God had told me in a whisper that the praises of his people break the bondages and strongholds. And what I saw when that was said was God standing up next to that fortress <laughs> and our praise became a hammer, a war hammer, which is pretty devastating in any kind of way. And I saw him slamming that yeah. every single time a, a word was uttered, every single time a breath was breathed. Every single time that one heart was given, every single time that a heart was open and ready to receive from him, 
smashing that over and over. So to the staff here, to everybody here, the demonic forces that have been against this church, they ain't doing nothing. Come on. <laughs> In Jesus' name, they're done. Yeah, amen. We have broken through this morning. This is amazing. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. 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 Yeah. I'll never stop. <laughs> if I start speaking, I, there's so much. Yeah, yeah. But I want to thank God. He's reigniting my fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's reigniting. You don't know the discouragement. My heart has always been for outreach. Yes. I hit the floor running from the time God saved me. I didn't know anything. I didn't feel worthy to do anything. All I knew is that God loved me. God saved me. I didn't even really understand his love for me. But God has been igniting that. Yes. He's been reminding me of all the miracles he's done. Yeah. Yes. And he had me launch Isaiah 61 again. <laughs> <laughs> he had me launch Single Parents United again. And I've been doing this and it's like, Lord, whatever you want me to do, restore the joy of my salvation. Yes. Yes. I was sitting in that seat going, Lord, I want more. Yes. I want more. more, more, I want more. Yes. Revival.com with Robert Clancy and his um, his morning devotional. He said, someone out there has a chip tooth. Oh. And he began to pray for that. And the pain oh. left my tooth immediately. Yeah. I shared the testimony with him on Facebook. I put it out there. They put a, a, a picture of the tooth. And I said, God is reminding me that he cares for every little pain I have. Yes. Yes. I didn't even ask God to heal that. I just ordered the horror gel. But God wanted to heal it. And he saw my pain. Yes. Even that little pain. Yes. And he is with me. Yes. He cares for me. Yes. Even every little hurt. Everything. And he wanted me to be reminded of that. Yes. Because I've gotten used to the miracle signs and wonders. Yes. I've seen those. Yes. But I repent of where I dropped the ball and yes. not shown that to the former yes. generation. Yes. Yes. Where I've let my fire grow yes. cold with disappointment and yes. heartbreak. Yes. And I repent of that. Yes. Yes. And I return wholeheartedly. I will speak yes. his word. Yes. I will do what he yes. has yes. 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 So I'm thankful for this church and for being welcomed into your family. Okay. She's, she says she wants more. Now, before she even said that, I just heard the Holy Spirit saying, oh, "Everybody, reach your hand and say more fire, 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 more fire." More fire. More fire. <laughs>
many people try to, to yeah. go through, well, what's going on in Toronto? There's an outpouring of, of the Father's love. Yeah. It's still happening. There's a great outpouring of His grace that's coming right now. Yeah. And they couldn't explain what was going on. But the one thing I even heard John Arnett say this this week as I was listening to some of them talk and reflect, um, as they're even telling some vision for ahead, that what they saw there was that it just continued to bring good and healing and reflect right back to Jesus every time. Yes. No matter what. Yes. And the things that didn't would fall off. Yes. And just a reminder that God's order looks like Pentecost. People are saying, what are they drinking? <laughs> so I'm just going to say that for anybody that wants to say, oh, well, it's like that's order true. this morning. Um, how about Pentecost? Is that our order? Because it, it probably seemed a little crazy. Probably way crazier than what we've even seen here today. But it's real, and I've seen so many of you already, it's hitting you. He's got more for you. This isn't the end. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. smiling over there. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I have two things. So St. Francis was told by the Lord, go and preach the gospel and use words if necessary. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what talking about? Love will just emanate right out of your eye sockets on other people. And, um, God says... When you don't forgive yourself, it's the same as you're not forgiving that person in front of you. You're exactly as important to him as that person as well. Yes. This worship was begun because the governor said he will not worship and churches will not be, right? Yes. That wasn't rebellion. That was saying, no, my God. I will worship him. Yes. Just the same as Daniel said the same thing. I will worship him. There has been so much, not just distortions, but there's been so much that's come out to destroy even our country and our churches. There's been quite upheaval. Even lately, I've seen so many in the church that call themselves part of the church tearing each other apart. I'm not sure what you're going to do. Division. And, and the thing is, is I, every division that they could come up with. And you know what? God's bringing his love, his truth, his restoration. It doesn't matter color, creed, anything. And it doesn't matter how we we think we should agree on one little thing or not. He's bringing completeness right now in unity. And so we're going to focus on receiving the true love of God, the, the true um, wiping away of everything. True forgiveness. Fullness. The fullness. A true new heart, clean heart. Yeah. And even in this outpouring right now that we're feeling here, we're not going to go on. And so when you leave here today, continue with the things that have been distracting you. Push them away. Yes. And I'm going to be honest. If you got to, got to cancel cable, cancel it. That's right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that to, to be religious, but to say, whatever it is, put it down. You need to take a fast from your, from your phone. Whatever it is right now, this right here is stirring. Okay? Capture it. Get ready. Receive more. It's going to continue. Even as you go home today, you're, you're going to continue to receive stuff. Yeah. But don't think the enemy doesn't want to bring stuff against you sure, right now. Sure, sure. are not your right hand. So right now, hold on to what you have even experienced this morning, what you felt. It's your testimony. And so even as things come at you this week, you speak what you what you felt and what you received this morning, the testimony that you have this morning. <laughs> And say what he was saying in another way that's what you're speaking last week and a lot of our calls with, with some of the other guys, fire pastors. Keep the fire burning on yes. the altar this week. Yes. Don't let it go out. It's yes. your, your, your job there. <laughs> Keep it burning. Keep it burning. <laughs> so, um, I want to ask you something. How many of you feel different right now? Yeah. How many of you feel refreshed? Yeah. New? Yeah. 
When I was sitting back there during worship, do you know what I smelled? I smelled cow dung. <laughs> and the Lord reminded me of the dung gate in heaven, which was turned into a beautiful gate. I mean, on earth, I'm sorry, in Jerusalem. And it was turned, and people don't know the dung gate was actually the beautiful gate turned. And this morning, you just experienced the beautiful love of God all through my life. In place of all that dung, all the stuff that we were carrying. We're new. Take that like she said. We need to take it with us. We are equipped with things that the enemy can't touch. We don't need any other kind of weapon except for what he gives us. Yeah. So keep going all this free and keep wanting more and keep wanting more. Because I'm telling you, he'll bring them more. He'll bring them more and he'll bring even more people with you because they'll see a difference and say, what's going to happen to you? What, what's, there's something different about you this week. What happened to you? I'm telling you. Just come with me. Let me show you what happened to me. <laughs> and watch what Jesus does for that. Amen. And let me just say, for anybody that hasn't been around a farm, cow doggy is flammable. <laughs> That's what you were going to say? It's very flammable. It's very flammable. And it burns hot, hot, hot. Gross. They, in the old days, they used it to keep their houses warm. Exactly. Yeah. Fuel. Yeah. Fuel for the fire. Wing it. <laughs> you ready? Yes. Yes. Oh, you best both of you both. You both. <laughs> fire. Stoke the fire. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say today was just amazing. Um, what I'm realizing, God has shown me so many aspects of who He is to me right now in my life. Um, my daughter, over the holidays, says, uh, "You know, Mom, I, I'm, I'm going to get married," and um, He proposed to her over the holidays, and I didn't know him. And <laughs> 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 this is my first
and it comes out that beautiful piece of glass yeah, yeah, yeah. that they sell for thousands and thousands of dollars. So how much more is God's blood mm. and his love that he shed for us yes. to put us the privilege to be put in the fire? Yes. To come out so he be glorified in none of us but all of his beauty. <laughs> the people will see that without even mentioning anything. That they'll see that there's something in us that they are hunger and thirst for. Yeah. So I uh, can't wait to get that antenna about there were other people. <laughs> <laughs> so here are guys is down there playing. He plays every Friday night. So if you happen to walk downtown, his name is Mark. He was about to talk about Jesus. So, <laughs> here he is. More, Mark. More. Mark. More. Yeah. Yeah. Bless yeah. Bless so, I don't talk about my meal, what I do. But the Lord has had to put $5 in. And the next day, I went over to the drugstore. Yeah. And I come out, there was $10 standing in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where's your offering for you? That's hilarious. Ready? Ready? We're ready. Yeah. Yeah. We're ready. The whole world's about to change. Yeah. 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 Did you renew your profession? <laughs> One. We don't, we don't say no. the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit. God was adding to the number that were being saved daily. Yes. God was adding. Yes. Yes. Pentecost yes. came, and God added. Yes. yes. And we're asking the fire to come. Yes. And then God will add. Yes. 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 You know, when I was younger, you know, you're younger, you run around and you do everything real stupid, right? You, you know, knock your head and break your arm. And, you know, you get older, you get wiser. I found this out in ministry, too. You get wiser. You learn how to be in the flow. You learn how to stay in the lane. And let God do what he can do, and then you do what you can do. And it's important for each of you to discover and understand what your gift is. Yes. Don't try and do something out of your own strength. God's going to do it in the end. He wants you to be a part of it so you can experience that glory, but without striving. Yeah. That's right. Without striving. Yeah. He's going to save. We're going to hunger. We're going to hunger and we're going to repent and he's going to save yes. and we'll be ready. Yes. We'll be ready to receive yes. when they come in. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, Siobhan. Siobhan. Well, God was having me pray over you, and I don't know anything about your story, but he also told me while I was standing there that I was supposed to give you this ring to remember oh today. Oh. And the most important thing is to remember you are a pure bride. Trusted me. 
the Lord showed me who that was that she was trusting. And I walked through the crowd and I just walked up to her and I said, Nancy, can I hold you? I said, can the Jesus in me hold you? And she said, yes. Like that. Yes. that is betrothed I thank you Father right now may your fire burn in them may, may, may they be able to say Father I burn for you for Jesus I burn for you I thank you Father I love you receive it bless your people Lord and I thank you no weapon shall come against them in the name of Jesus may you just may this be the, just the 